Unreal Engine. That's kind of a, that's pretty, things are pretty crazy with that. There are quite a few guides on YouTube on how to get nice cinematic renders out of Unreal Engine, but I want to show you what to do with them after you have it rendered. So here's how to composite Unreal renders in Fusion. We recently did a whole bunch of rendering with Unreal. We've been working with Unreal for quite a bit now, and you need a pretty strong computer to run something like Unreal Engine. So we asked our friends over at Puget Systems, and they helped us out with an incredible machine. These guys are the PC pros. They'll custom build you a machine that is designed for the stuff that you like to do. Like check this out. You can go to their website and find a workstation that is perfect for whatever you're working with. So like here's one for Unreal Engine. These are designed and tested to be amazing at whatever you're working in. And honestly, even if you don't buy their system, they have all this research and hardware recommendations and stuff that is just so good. These guys are pros, man. So huge thanks to Puget Systems for helping us out with that. And if you're looking for a PC, make sure to go and check them out. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I have a render here from our movie. We have these kind of spaceships, and this is rendered as an EXR sequence. So it's just a bunch of EXRs in a folder. A great way to get these into Resolve is to go to your media page and navigate to where your renders are here in this media storage panel. And you should be able to navigate to the folder with all of your stills in it and it should show up like this. If it doesn't show up as a sequence like this, you can go to these three dots and under frame display mode, make sure that you select sequence. Once you have them as a sequence, you can take this and just drag it into your media pool down here and that will open it in your project. Now here in the edit page, I can right click on this piece of media and select create new timeline using selected clips. That's going to add these to a timeline. I'll hit create and now we can play this back and see what the render actually looks like. But you may notice a couple things. One is this is really dark. And two, what if we want to get kind of crazy with this? Well, we can open this up in Fusion just by being over the clip in the timeline and clicking on Fusion. And now we have all kinds of crazy abilities to do some fancy stuff here in the Fusion page. Now, the first thing that you'd probably notice uh, is this is really dark. And the reason for that is that EXRs are rendered in linear color space. A really simplified explanation of this is there is a lot of image and color data here kind of packed into this one file, but it doesn't really look good on screen until we sort of unpack it. Now, a lot of the time this will be rendered in ACES linear. Again, there are a bunch of guides on how to render that kind of thing out of Unreal, but once you have it, we're going to want to deal with it here in Fusion. So after our media in, I'm going to hit shift spacebar. That'll bring up our select tool palette and I'll type in color space and we want color space transform this right here and that will add a node that will convert our color space and your settings are going to depend on your workflow but with a render from unreal in aces you're going to want to pick aces ap1 input gamma linear for output color space that's going to be whatever big wide color space you want to use kind of for your intermediate stuff for this one we'll just use davinci wide gamut and output color space will be davinci intermediate tone mapping let's turn to none and gamut mapping, let's turn to none. And what this is doing is it's taking our linear colors out of these EXRs and it's putting it into sort of a log format, an intermediate format. And it acts kind of more like regular footage that you would shoot with a cinema camera or something like that. So let's go ahead and rename this. I'll hit F2 to rename it. Let's say CST lin to DWG, which is DaVinci wide gamut. And this color space we actually want at the end of our node graph here and we're going to do anything fancy pretty much before this okay and the idea is that we can take this log image here and we can bring this into the color page and our color tools are going to treat this very nicely and it's going to act like regular footage and not some weird CG render. But one thing that we'll want to do is preview this in a way that isn't kind of washed out like this. And we can do that with a LUT. I have a LUT here, which I've made, which is just a DaVinci wide gamut to Rec 709. And now we can kind of preview this render and it looks really nice. To make a LUT like this, we can actually just make it with this render if we want to. We can go over to the color page and all we have to do is do our color grade on this footage and then save it as a LUT. Now the way that we do that is actually really similar to what we did here with this color space transform, but we can do that in the color page. I'll just go up to effects and scroll down to color space transform and drag that onto our first node here. But this time we're going to go from DaVinci wide gamut 
in the input color space and gamma. And the output color space will say rec 709, rec 709. Tone mapping method, let's say luminance and gamut mapping will say saturation compression like that. And what that's going to do is take our log footage that looks like this and it's going to make it look normal. This is a great way to color grade anything that is shot in a log format. So you could do this with your Sony footage. You would just have to here under input color space, do something like S gamut three, S gamut three cine, and your gamma might be something like S log three. But instead of using the camera format, we're using this DaVinci wide gamut intermediate, and we're just changing this to look good on our screen. So this is just how color management works. I do have a few videos on this in color grading. So if you're not familiar with that, definitely recommend checking it out. But now that we have this kind of looking nice, we can open up our clips on clips here. And that'll open up these thumbnails here. I can right click on any of these thumbnails and say generate LUT 65 point cube. And we can save this LUT to a folder. We'll call this DWG to Rec 709 like this. And I'll hit save. And if we go to DaVinci Resolve up here and go to preferences under general, we have this part that says LUT locations. We can add wherever we put that LUT. So just navigate to whatever the folder is where you put that and select the folder and that'll add it to these locations right here. You only have to do this once the very first time you do this. Once you have a LUT, you can go up here in your viewer to this dropdown and you can select that LUT so that you can preview what this will look like when it's color graded. You always wanna do your compositing and your effects and everything with this kind of viewer LUT on. Doing your compositing and everything while you're looking at this log footage isn't really a good idea because this isn't what it's gonna look like when the people who watch your movie see it. So we just turn on this LUT to kind of preview what this will look like when it's color graded. So now that we have our color management set up, we can get crazy. The first thing that I would recommend is to actually replace this media in node. Fusion can do a lot of really cool stuff with your render, but it is a little bit happier using a node called a loader. So I can hit shift spacebar and type LOAD and that'll bring up a loader node. And what we can do is just navigate to our EXRs and select one of those and hit open. And what this will do is it will bring up this same render, but we have a few more options. And we can make sure everything kind of came over just fine by taking the output of this and merging it over the output of our media in one like that. And now there shouldn't be any difference here. If I turn this off or on, it should look exactly the same. Okay, good. That means we can just get rid of these two and we'll just replace this like this. So now we have our loader coming in and there are ways in Unreal Engine to export multiple passes. Now a pass is kind of like other channels that you can use in your render to do fancy things. It's sort of like a layer in Photoshop. And so you could have a layer, for instance, that just shows the color of something without any lighting, or you can have a map of how far away things are. And there's a few different things that you can render, but to access those, what you really need to do is go to this EXR file, go to this loader, and go over to format in the inspector and twirl down channels. And here we can select the different channels that are embedded in the file. So if I wanna use just the base color, I can say base color R, base color G, and base color B. And so now we have a map of just the base colors which we can use for various things. But that's miserable to do that every time. We'll just undo that. Wouldn't it be great if there was an automated way for us to just kind of get all of the different render passes, the different render layers out so that we could use them all for different things? Well, there actually is a way to do that, but it's kind of an external plugin thing. It's an add-on for Fusion called Reactor. We'll put a link in the description here, but basically you go to this site and you download the Reactor, script, save it to something like your desktop, and you drag this script into your node graph, and it will ask you if you want to install. So go ahead and hit install and launch, and it will install. I already have mine installed, so I won't do that. But after that's all installed and you've restarted Resolve, you can go up to workspace and down to scripts, and here we have Reactor. I can go here and open Reactor, and it will open up the Reactor window. This looks kind of intimidating, but it's really just a bunch of plugins that you can install for Fusion, and a lot of these are really, really helpful. These are the ones that I have installed if you want some recommendations, but the one that we're really looking at here for these 3D renders is HOS Split EXR Ultra. This thing is the bomb. Here's what it does. If you have an EXR file like this, and it has to be a loader, not a media in, but a loader, you can right click on this, and under script, you can select HOS Split EXR Ultra, 
and look what happens. This thing comes up, you say run and close, and it will make copies of this loader and it will set these channels for you to be just right. And so now all of your render passes are their own nodes, which is really great, especially if you have a lot of render passes. This actually works exactly the same with a render from Blender or 3ds Max or whatever. Same thing. If there's separate channels in the EXR, it will split them all out like this. And now you can take each one of these and I can select this and hit one on the keyboard to load it here in the left viewer. And depending on what it is, you can take a look at all the different strange things it makes. And that's how you would access those extra channels. If you just need like one channel, it's not that big a deal, you know, to copy and paste this, go over to format and then switch these to, you know, something like depth, red, green, blue, alpha, right? And that's the same thing that'll give us the depth pass, but this is just a nice automated way to do it. So now that we have all of these extra passes, we can do fancy things with them. What kind of fancy things do you ask? Well, let's say we want to do something like lighten this ship. It would be really nice if we had a way to automatically kind of isolate this ship, trace it out or something like that. Well, we can do that by generating a mat. A mat is a black and white image that controls kind of the transparency of something. We could also do something like trace this out ourselves, but you know why? So what we can do is take something like one of these actor hit proxy masks, which by itself doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't even really look like it worked. Like, what is this? This is weird. But we can run this through a little utility, which is also in Reactor called crypto mat right here. This thing is amazing because what we've rendered here is actually a channel that is designed to work with crypto mat. So we'll select this shift space bar crypto mat once that's installed and I can hit one on the keyboard and now it looks weird some more. Great. It looks weird. Yay. But with the crypto mat selected, we can grab this little point selector thing here and we can put this over whatever we want to add to a mat. So whatever we want to kind of isolate. So I'll just put this over this kind of yellow part because I know this is part of our ship. We can also just do it here on this right viewer. I'll just put this right here on the ship and here in our crypto mat tools in our inspector, I can just hit add and now we have this bright yellow and we can move this around and just continue to hit add until everything on our ship is yellow. This, if there's multiple different objects or multiple different materials, you might have to do this a bunch. If it's all one object or one material, it might not be that big of a deal. Just select all of these parts and just keep adding them to our mat. And that looks pretty good. Now that we have these selected in their bright yellow, we can go to the crypto mat here and here where it says view mode, let's just go to mat. And look at this. We have a perfect mat, white where we want to select and black where we don't want to select of our ship. So we can use this mat to limit any kind of effects that we want to do. For instance, we could take this color corrector here. I can just drag this down in between our ship and our color space transform. Normally, if I made this pink, it would make everything pink or green or yellow, whatever. It would affect the entire image, but we'll take this crypto mat and we'll take the output of this and put it into the blue input of our color corrector and look what happens. It limits it to only happen inside of this mat which happens to be just over our ship. And now I can do something like add gain to our ship to make it brighter, maybe just pump the contrast, whatever I wanna do. And we can work on this just like it were on its own layer. So that's a really nice way to adjust different parts of your image with this mat. And the mat also moves along with our shot because this is animated. So we don't have to move it or rotoscope it or anything like that. It just automatically works really well. This crypto mat is super helpful. Let's say we want to replace the sky. I can do kind of a similar thing here. I'll just copy and paste this crypto mat here like this and bring our hit proxy mask into our crypto mat. And we'll just go ahead and reset our crypto mat. Bring this up in the first viewer. This time I'll select the sky. I'll hit add, switch our view mode to mat. And that's just going to select just the mat for our sky. And again, we can use this as a mat to do something like, I don't know, maybe take these clouds and we'll merge the clouds over our background, transform them to make sense here, something like that. And I can take this crypto mat and bring this into the mask input for our merge. And now it's going to limit our sky to only show up where that white mat was, which gives us a perfect sky replacement. This is a little strong, so I'll take this merge and just blend this down a little bit. We can even add a mask to our media in and feather that out a little bit so that it looks a little bit more natural. I'll also add a crop because it's a little confusing when this kind of goes off the edge of the screen. So we'll just crop that like that. And now we have this sky replacement that was very little work because we're using this generated mat. 
pretty cool stuff. So if you can render a crypto mat, you know, a material or an object ID out of your 3D software, that's a really, really good tool to use inside of Fusion. It just makes adjusting things in post so easy. But I think that's enough diving deep here for today. If you guys want a little bit more on this, I can go over some other passes and things like that, but that should get you started doing your composites inside of Fusion. And again, once the composite's done, you can go over to the color page and you'll have this all put together in a log format, which you can easily color grade and do all of your normal stuff too, just like regular footage. So a little bit more advanced tutorial for anybody who's working with Unreal. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do wanna get a little bit more into compositing and look at all the ins and outs of Fusion, we have a course for that. It's called Pro Compositing in Fusion. Make sure to check that out. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. And again, thank you so much to Puget Systems for helping us out. If you're into 3D animation and compositing, I definitely cannot recommend them enough when it comes to building a PC. This was, uh, this was a long one, but thank you. Thank you for hanging out to the end. Since you're here, well, why don't you tell me your favorite kind of milk? I, I, I don't know. I was just, I had oat milk the other day. It was really good. And so do you like oat milk too? Or are you more of a 2% kind of person? <laughs>